you're listening to Embrace Your Snake, the number one podcast for creatives and entrepreneurs that have big ideas and just need a little help to get them out into the world. I'm your host, Michael Jackson, and today we're talking with an artist who owns the community-driven house concert touring format. Her book called No Booker, No Bouncer, No Bartender, How I Made $25,000 on a Two-Month House Concert Tour and How You Can Too debuted at number one on Amazon's Music Business Bestsellers list. She's a TED Talk speaker, and her single, I Know, I Know, from her album Connections, has been viewed more than 5 million times. She's also a TED Talk speaker. She's here today to talk with us about house concerts and how they can help you in your music career. Please listen in as I talk with Shannon Curtis. So, hey, Shannon, how are you doing? I'm awesome. How are you? (laughs) I'm doing great, too. (laughs) I'm glad we have this time together. Kind of like that Carol Burnett thing, you know, pulling the ear and all that. So, <laughs> so cool. We're going to talk to people today about, um, I'm like so interested in you because, um, you know, I've been talking with LA musicians and about how, how they see LA and viewed, viewed their experience there or still view their experiences there. Mm-hmm. And uh, you are, or were an LA musician who decided to move and, I want to, I want, let's start at the beginning. First of all, let's like how you got into your music, how you got into LA and then why you decided to leave LA. And I want to talk about what we can teach people that are still there, want to move there and all that kind of stuff. And then I want to talk about your cool house concert stuff too. Okay. Sounds okay. good. Well, I, I, I started doing, I mean, music has always been part of my life. I won't give you my ancient history, but you know, classically trained pianist, you know, in childhood was in my first band in um, starting in my early twenties in Northern California. And I was in that band for about eight years and learned so much during that time about how to make music, how to write songs, how to make recordings, how to book shows, how to perform, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And the band ended and I started my solo career in 2006. And um, also coinciding with that that time of my life, um, I, I I had been married for nine years and uh, was divorced and uh, just felt like I needed to get out of Dodge. I was living in Sacramento, California, and I'm like, well, it's sunny in Los Angeles. Let's go. <laughs> so um, I just, I, I really was just feeling a, a craving in my life to go start somewhere fresh where really nobody knew me and I knew no one and figure out who I was and what I wanted in my life, you know. From and somehow LA was that place for you where you just decided, you know what, I'm just going to go to LA. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. I mean, and honestly, the weather had like a lot to do with it. I, you know, I think I probably made that decision on a, on a foggy day in Sacramento and I'm like, screw this, you know? (laughs) And, and, um, and, you know, I wanted to stay in California. Um, it's, it felt like, it felt like it was far enough away to get that new start that I was looking for, but not so far away that I felt like I was dangling out there helpless. You know, I I could still drive six hours and get back to my hometown, you know? So sure. when you first got to LA, um, your goal in life was not to be full time music, or was no, it? No, I, I, I was. I wanted. I knew that that's what I wanted to do with my life. I just. I. It wasn't like I'm like. It's not like I was sitting in Sacramento thinking, "What am I going to do to get my music career off the ground?" Oh, I need to move to LA to do that. Like mm. I was going to continue pursuing my music no matter where I was. It wasn't that. It wasn't motivated. The move was not motivated by career ambition. It was motivated by personal need. <laughs> um, uh-huh. But so, so anyway, I think that was actually somewhat helpful as I moved to LA and started doing music there because I, I feel like I, I always had this like uh, perspective that all my chips were not placed on LA's square, right? Like, I, like being in LA was not what I was banking on, like making or breaking what I was doing. And I think that perspective was helpful because there are so many people that I encountered in my decade of living there who I think really put all their chips on like, you know, Mm -hmm. the career will be made in Los Angeles. I have to be discovered. I like, you know, and, and really giving away a lot of your power in doing that because you believe we, we, we we allow ourselves to believe this myth that, um, that someone else can make the success for us that we don't actually have that. That that is so key. (laughs) There's the, that's one of the reasons I do this podcast because I want people to claim their power, keep your music, keep your identity. So talk about yeah. that. What what made you realize that? Because most people don't get that right away. 
Yeah, well, and I didn't get it right away either. I think that it was helpful for me to kind of have that perspective sort of running in the background of my own experience of not, not, move, not making that move for that reason. But, but it took me a while to really figure that out also. Like I, I um, you know, when, you, when you're immersed in this, this town where everybody has come to pursue their creative ambition, it's electric and it, there's, so much, there's so much good about that. Like you're just in an atmosphere where people are doing and creating and moving and, you know, working. And that's great. But also I think that there's a pervasive um, sort of, uh, hmm, there's a tendency to, to buy into the idea that, that, that because this is the industry town, that it's going to be the industry that will make you. And, and so I did get caught up in the, well, I've got to play at the right venues and, and, um, and I've got to, you know, get the, the right kind of write-ups in the local papers or, you know, that kind of thing. And what I started to, to, to realize was that a lot of my energy was being put towards stuff that was just dead end, dead end, dead end. That wasn't really mm-hmm. giving me any sort of re- like substantial return. You know, like I played at the hotel cafe a number of times and I worked my butt off to get people to get tickets and show up. And, you know, I'm glad that I had the opportunity to do that. And I'm, and I'm grateful for the people who came out to support, you know, those shows, but even playing at the hotel cafe, like the place to play as a singer songwriter in LA. Exactly. It didn't do anything for me in the long run. Like it, it wasn't, I mean, I, I, it's on my resume, right? If I, if I have a resume, I don't have a resume. P.S. <laughs> but like, you know, like, <laughs> but you know, it, it's, it's like, it is something that happened and that I, that, that I did, but it's not, it didn't mean anything in terms of my actual career and forward motion in my life. Right. Now, so that's the, one. Ex- go ahead. That's, that's, that's exactly right. I understand that because you know I've I've been to Hotel Cafe, been to, to yeah. Roxy, you know, you to go to all these places, and the real question is, did you, you were about to say it didn't really do anything for your life? Go on with that. What's the deal? Yeah. There? So you know, I, I what I what I came to realize over a course of many years, and you know, and hard lessons won, is that I get to control where I put my energy. Right. I have, I have a, I have a finite resource here in my time and energy. Right. And I get to choose where I invest those things. And it occurred to me over the course of many years that I could choose to invest gobs of time with, you know, getting those right bookings, trying to get those, those, um, uh, prestigious blog write-ups, uh, you know, going after all these things that they, they say you're supposed to do to mm-hmm. make progress moving forward in music career. Or I could put my energy into activities that were actually growing the connections I was making with people who appreciate my music mm-hmm. and who want to support it. And it occurred to me over time that like, I, I, I see way more results in putting my energy toward making connections with people mm-hmm. than, and so there, it, there came a certain point where I just abandoned all of these other, these other efforts in terms of pursuing mm-hmm. venues in Los Angeles. And like, I stopped, I haven't played in a public music venue aside from, I, I, I've done a handful of theater shows, just a, a few theater shows opening for um, Sean Colvin. Mm-hmm. Um, Love her. Yeah, she's wonderful. But <laughs> I, I had the opportunity to open a, a few shows for her. Um, at some theaters uh, over the last number of years. But besides those shows, I hadn't performed in a public music venue since 2012. What caused you to flip the script? I mean, it, we uh, definitely, we're gonna, I want to talk about that. But what, mm-hmm. what all of a sudden, did you just wake up one day and go like, man, I am tired of having to bring people to this venue so that the bar can make money and all I'm getting is, you know, whatever above the door, if I bring enough people, that sort of thing. What, what right. caused I'm- you to do it? The thing that really that really helped me flip the script, it, and it wasn't instantaneous, but it was it was my experience doing house concerts, and I know you wanted to talk about that, so mm-hmm. I'm going to share a little bit about how I got into doing that because it's relevant to this question. Um, in 2011, um, mm-hmm. I had been I had been doing laps around the country, playing in small venues, you know, college campuses. Um, you know, building up my, my email list, like two names at a time <laughs> in like Des Moines, <laughs> Iowa and Charlottesville, Virginia. And, you know, like just like little, you know, here and there and, and working hard and, uh, and I'm seeing a little tiny bit of growth, but not anything 
substantial. And so in 2011, I was, I was in LA um, and I got an email from a woman in San Diego who had seen me play a few times. And she's like, Hey, you haven't played in San Diego in a while. You should come down here and play. What if you played in my living room and I could invite some friends and we'll ask for donations for the show. What do you think? And I was like, ah, well, you know, it'll, it'll probably make for a fun Friday night. I'm guessing we'll probably at least make our gas money. Yeah. So let's go down and, and give it a shot. And so we went down there and it was just this huge light bulb experience because <laughs> first of all, the experience itself was amazing. Like just, there was a room full of people who were hanging on every word. We had this shared emotional experience together, you know, yep. like, it's nothing like a bar venue where the stupid drunk guy is like, you know, distracting everybody or like the coffee house venues where the latte maker goes off at the wrong moment, you know, like, like it was just connective and real and authentic and wonderful. And that was something I had really been missing in a lot of the venue shows I've Mm -hmm. been playing. But secondly, at the end of the night, when we counted out our donations, we made way more than gas money. And that was just like, wait a second, you know, I'm working my ass off to try to get people to fill the hotel cafe. And only after I get 30 people in the door, will they pay me a small portion of the ticket prices. Correct. And so I'm walking out with like barely enough to cover my parking fees in Hollywood. Yeah. And here I've, I've not only paid for the, the, the travel that we mm-hmm. did to get down here, but made a profit, made uh, all these names on my mailing list, my mm-hmm. email list of people who want to stay in touch. And so that was the beginning of it. We started then experimenting with doing house concerts as filler dates on my club touring. Um, after that, we had, we had scheduled, you know, in this effort of trying to build a fan base, you know, in major cities on the West Coast. That was the, that was the goal, you know. And so yeah. I was scheduled myself to play um, for five months in a row, once a month in, in, uh, in five West Coast cities, like I was a local. So we were mm-hmm. traveling, you know, we were doing Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, Sacramento, because I was from there. Uh, in that area and Los Angeles and playing those five cities as though I were a local once a month. Okay. Um, But those shows were largely on weekends and we had all this time in between. And so we're like, well, let's, you know, that house concert was fun in San Diego. Let's see if we can do more of those as maybe filler dates on these, on these club tours. And at the end of the five months, what we figured out was that those house concerts were outperforming the club shows in every single metric like yeah. from the fun we were having the money we were making music being sold names on the email list social media interactions i mean like everything and that was to, to get back to your question like what was the thing that flipped the switch that was the switch because i realized i had like spent so much energy booking these shows and trying to get fans out of the clubs and seeing very little return on my investment there versus these filler date house concerts thrown into the mix we're mm-hmm. doing way better and it's like well, gosh, if I just shifted my energy from this to this, what could we create, you know? And, right. and that was the beginning of it. That, that makes so much sense. And it seems like with people, I, I have had this discussion with people about, well, why don't you try doing house concerts? And they don't get it sometimes. <laughs> yeah. They just don't understand that your audience is there. It's like they want to hear you. They want to be like, you know, right here, yeah. you and me talking, yeah. you know? Yeah, well, they need to read my book is what they need they to They need to read your book, <laughs> absolutely. And I've read your book, and it's, it's fabulous. The, um, I, I, I just don't know how to like get people more into the house concert scene. I was talking with a guy the other day who said, you know, with L.A. specifically, that the house concerts was a fad. Um, and it may have been in L.A., but there's the rest of the country. Well, yeah. And here's the thing. There, there are different kinds of house concerts. Okay. So there are, there are people who have jumped on a fad bandwagon of house concerts. I think like, you know, there's the so far sounds people. I'm not sure if you've heard uh-huh. of their, so far you know, sounds and I've heard um, of- you know, they're an organization that, you know, the events they put on are fun. I've, I've been to one. Um, but like the artists don't see any profit from those, those events. It's that's all exposure based. That's the biggest based. problem with their whole organization, I do believe. Totally. I mean, that's, that's the LA problem writ large. Like, oh no, come play for exposure. No, we need to pay our bills. <laughs> you, know? Like, you know what? We're going to do a whole show on exposure and we're going to end with talking about the Super Bowl. 
<laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, the halftime show? Is that yeah. an exposure gig? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, you're kidding me. But, you know, on that kind of a scale, sure. I'm sure J-Lo and Shakira have sold lots more me or streamed lots more music, you know, <laughs> since the, I, who knows? I don't know. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about that one. I mean, the, 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 the way the industry is set up right now, you know, um, is working at, at a large scale for large label artists. I mean, the streaming world, the exposure gigs, I get, I get how it's working for that scale of things. And, and, and honestly, and I, I will say this, if, if that's a person's goal is to be that kind of a like name in lights kind of famous artist for whom the, the system mm-hmm. is set up to work, that's not a bad goal, you know, like go for it. I just realized for myself that that wasn't what was important to me about doing what I do. Like what I want to do is make art that connects with people that helps them make deeper connections with themselves and with other people. And I I figured out that I didn't need the system at all Mm -hmm. to achieve that goal in a, in a sustainable way. I mean, you asked one of the, you asked earlier, much earlier in the introduction, why I left LA. Um, It wasn't because I hated LA or anything like that. (laughs) It was that my husband and I had gotten ourselves in a position to buy a house and we could, mm-hmm. but we couldn't afford to to buy a home in Los Angeles or in California, really, in general. And so we looked around the country for a place, you know, to, to where we could afford it. And we moved to Washington State, and we yeah. live in this beautiful house now that we own, and it's wonderful. But the, my point is that, like, I figured out, and, and my husband's an artist, also. He's a producer, record producer, music producer, and engineer. I mean, we're a pair of married working artists mm-hmm. who have bought a house. That's- and so what I'm saying is, like. If the name and lights thing is your goal, awesome, great, go for it. For a lot of us, that's not the goal. The goal is to be able to do what we do, to do what we feel we are supposed to be doing in this world, mm-hmm. and to do it in a way that, that is sustainable for us, that, that we can live you know, healthy, productive lives and you know, maybe, maybe buy a home. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe we don't have to stress over how we're going to pay our bills. You know what I mean? Right. And so that's the thing. Like, I think that you know, once I realized that I had the power to shift the to shift the frame and focus my energy on places that were giving me that kind of a return on my investment, Mm -hmm. that it was a no brainer. It was a no brainer to just be like, no, I I don't work in the music industry. Like I don't consider that what I do at all. I make art, I make music, I'm a storyteller. I put together experiences for people to enjoy on our concerts. And it turns out that there are people who value those kinds of experiences mm-hmm. and who want to be part of that kind of work being put into the world. And so I figured out how to build community around what it is that I do in a way that helps it, that, that sustains it, that sustains the work and sustains our lives in the, in the meantime. Yeah. Talk, talk to the person that has, that's going like, you know, mind blown. <laughs> it's like, wait a second, you're making more money than going into the bars. I don't have to kiss anyone's butt. I don't have to like drag stuff up and down. Like, you know, stairs outside of the Roxy and try and get into the, <laughs> the place. What I mean, we do it? have challenging load-ins sometimes. There's just, there's I mean, always yeah. challenging load-ins and load-ins, but <laughs> at least there's like people there who might help you. It's true. <laughs> it and there's probably you. not pee on the floor. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I interrupted you. I'm sorry. So talk. No, to no, me. no, that's good. So I want to talk to the musicians who are going like, you know, I've never done a house concert. I've been playing at whatever venue that's either still there or not there. And, mm-hmm how do I get set up so I can go out and like just try hunts or do I have to go to my friend and say, Hey, I want to do a concert or how do I get somebody? Yes. And the answer is yes. Go to your friends. You know, and I, I kind of left a part of this conversation dangling a little bit a second ago. You were saying that, L, that in LA, the house concerts were kind of a fad. So there are the people like the so far sounds and the, you know, um, uh, folks who sell, lists of house concert hosts where you can mm-hmm. try to get bookings and, yeah, and there is concerts these, in your home does that yeah, yeah yeah there's so there's there's a well-established network of house concert venues all over the united states and there has been a tradition for that for decades like it's a well-established tradition that's not the world that i'm functioning in at all let's so, talk about like, your world <laughs> yeah my world is is community driven so um, the first house concerts that we did on that like testing out filler date thing that we did was um, uh, friends. It was people on my on my um, uh, uh, newsletter list that mm-hmm. had responded saying, "Yeah, that sounds fun. You know, let's 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 check that out." So people who were supporters, uh, friend. I mean, some of my early house concert hosts were family members. 
My mom has hosted several house concerts. My dad has hosted several house concerts. My mm -hmm. aunts have hosted <laughs> house concerts. So, you know, like it, we, we really did start with, you know, the people closest to us and we've built out from there. And I can talk about that in a minute, but, um, but yes, it, it is, it is all based on, on people who, who know me, who mm -hmm. support what I do. Um, uh, actually a lot of our hosts, uh, many of our hosts each year when we go out on our tour, um, we've maybe never met in person, but they know my music, they support, yes. you know, and these are not people who host house concerts. These are just folks who turn it, we, we help turn them into house concerts. So they're, they're not people who are doing this, you know, six times a year for various artists coming through town. This is like the one house concert event they do. Maybe, you know, maybe they do it annually. We've had some, you know, hosts that yeah. have hosted us like eight years in a row, you know. Now let's talk about this because one of the things that people might think is like, well, you were out touring before and you were doing all these different states in there and you've got an email mm -hmm. list built up. If they don't have that, so they can't say, you know what, we're going to be, we're going to go to New Jersey. Who do we call it for a house concert? What do those people do? Yeah, well, you know, it, the the, fir the very first tour that we did, we didn't go to the East Coast because I had m I had most of my my connections were on the west western mm -hmm. half of the U.S. Um, but you know, the first year that we did go to the East Coast, we had I mean, it was it was it was a bit of a gamble. We didn't have really enough house concerts booked to make the trip worth it. But we knew because we'd had experience with the model that if we got in got a foot in the door there, that that investment that risk that we would take would start to multiply. And it did, you know, like we had, I think three East coast house concerts the first year we went to the East coast. And now we spend, you know, a few weeks on the East coast when we go there on tour. Mm -hmm. um, because one of the beautiful things about this model, this community driven model is that, I mean, most of our host, most of our new hosts are people who were guests at a previous house concert of mine. Yes. And we're like, that was a great experience. I would love to share this with my friends and family and community. And so the next summer they sign up and it, it is, I mean, the word viral is, is overused, mm -hmm. but that's how this thing but spreads. But it is it. We you, infect you've got the people. audience and it builds yeah. out of that audience, right? It so does. It does. It, so, I mean, to answer your question, yeah, it is, it, it, it's tough to, to, to get started um, in new communities that you haven't been to yet. But if you can give people, if you can give people an experience that makes them want to jump on board and, and build this with you, um, it's worth taking the risks at the beginning. You know, you, like if, if you, if you want to go to New Jersey, for whatever reason you want to yeah, go to New Jersey, I don't, I don't know, <laughs> you know, maybe you, maybe you have a cousin there who would maybe, you know, do, do a house concert for you or, a, a, or a, you know, a friend from Facebook that, you know, you mm -hmm. haven't seen in years that, you know, I mean, leverage, leveraging your, your connections, your existing connections. Um, you know, I, I've been, this is this, this coming summer when we go out on tour, it'll be our ninth annual summer house concert tour. That's so awesome. we've been doing this for the better part of a decade. And at this point, you know, we've got our system and it's rolling and it's working but it wasn't always that way. Like there's, there's always for everyone getting started. It's not like a magic pill, you know, it's right. just, you have to work at it. You know, it is what we, what we're doing is relationship based. It is person to person. And so there is work involved in that. It's not like a, it's not like a lottery ticket. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, what you just said is like, I think so important also because one of the, the, the thing that you just said, and I do a lot of social media marketing for people mm. and management and I have come to the realization that the best social media or social network out there is actually being social, you know, <laughs> yeah, talking totally. to people, you know, yeah, absolutely. And that is the way that you build the connections and people mm -hmm. have to get, get that. And just talking, I almost believe that you could probably call up almost strangers and talk to them and be personable and probably get them to talk about, I, I'd almost like to do a concert with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've had a few years of experience of trying to yes, convince I think people you to do, do this. That. <laughs> you know, one really important thing to, to remember here too, in terms of that relationship building, like every relationship that we're involved in in our lives, we're involved in it because both parties get something of value from it, right? Mm -hmm. Like any good relationship that is, you know, I'm sure we have some that aren't, <laughs> that don't fit that definition. I've heard but of like, you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, I, that's something that I really take seriously that, you know, 
there's a mindset that I see a lot with, with artists. Um, and I think it's bred from that, that like typical Los Angeles competitive scarcity minded mm -hmm. thing about needing to get people to your shows. And, you know, like you're doing lots of asking, you know, like pay attention to me, look at me, come to my show, buy my record, blah, 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 blah. Um, that I think that, that, you know, I know for speaking from my own experience, it's, it's easy when you're in that mindset to forget that you, that, that, that people need something from you to be there for you. You know, like that's, right. that's how relationships work. And so with that in mind, like, I think it's really important if, if someone's listening and they're thinking they want to, you know, try this community driven house concert thing, that's really important to keep in the forefront of your mind at all times. What is it that I'm bringing of value to these people? Like we get so used to asking, 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 and it's all me, 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 mm -hmm. <laughs> but like the, the thing you ought to lead with is here what I, here's what I have to offer, you know, like, what is it that I have, you know, to, to, to give you in this, in this situation, the music, starting with the music I'm making, you know, am I making music that, you know, that, that actually is a service to people? Like, mm -hmm. here's a song that maybe hopefully will help you go with whatever you're going through right now. Or, you know, maybe here's a song that, I don't know, like just from the music to the experience, like it's all about, like, I really do think of what I do as being, uh, being in service of others. I, I have to agree with that. Music in general, I think really should be the whole, what do you get out of it? Not what do I get out of it? I mean, mm -hmm. you, the artists get something out of it because the participants get something out of it. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's been really great for me. Like I, um, one of the things that we, we wrote, we wrote this, the book about the house concert touring model that we use. Um, when I say we, I'm talking about me and my husband, Jamie right. Hill. <laughs> um, uh, so there's the Jamie and the we there. But, um, I'll put a big picture up of him so people can say, there's Jamie. It's like, who's this we guy? Huh? Yeah. So we, we put the first edition of the book out in 2014. And the book was really came, came to be because uh, so many artists had seen on social media what we were doing in our, in our first mm -hmm. few house concert tours. I was getting all these emails from people like, how did you do that? You know, like, tell me more. And I was like copying and pasting the same email to people. And someone's like, why don't you write a book about it? I'm like, Oh, okay. That's a good idea. So, so we put together a formalized book and, and the book is, is essentially just a how to manual, like steps one and done of all the things that we've learned about how to, how to do house concerts and how to do house concert touring successfully. Mm. It, we've, we've held nothing back in terms of, of what we know because I really want other artists to be able to go out and create this for themselves. Has it changed since 2014 or you think yes. it's still the same model? It's, oh, it's, it's constantly evolving. And so we put out a, we put out an update to the book um, a year later, a year later, two years later. I, I can't remember actually now, but there's a second edition to the book and that's now the one that's available on Amazon and, um, and, and on our website and stuff like that. Um, but in that second edition of the book, we added a bunch of new things because we're constantly learning. We're still learning stuff, you know, uh -huh. eight years into this that we tweak a little bit here and there to make it more successful for us. But one of the big changes that we made in the second edition of the book is I went through and I, every instance where I had used the word fan, I deleted it and replaced it, replaced it with some other word that was like supporter or community or mm -hmm. something like that. Because like, the word fan to me is just, it, it just it always felt something like an icky, dirty word, you know, like it, like here I am up on this pedestal and there's these adoring people. And I just, I was never comfortable with that. Um, and being able to just allow this, this house concert thing has just shifted my full frame about what it is that I do and what I have to offer the world. I am bringing, you know, the stuff that I've made to the table but my community members are bringing themselves, you know, my hosts are bringing the, you know, come, come to my house. I'm bringing, I'm inviting my, my, my community to it, to enjoy you. The folks who show up are bringing mm -hmm. food sometimes to share, you know, like, like it's, it's shifted my frame in terms of what, it, what my role in the world is as an artist. Question it's, here. When you yeah. go to somebody's house, how do you feel being there? In other words, do you look at yourself separate from the, host slash audience or do you see yourself as an invited guest or how do you see yourself when you go to someone's house that's i think that's real key 
to to being able to get along in this. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I think that there are some things that I have to do because I'm there to perform, and I do need to protect, like you know, um, uh, like I. Uh, like when it comes time to to take the stage or whatever, you know, I've got a little ritual that I got to go take out, you know, go go do before you know my warm ups and things like that. Mm-hmm. But aside from that, like as soon as the guests show up, we're there hanging out with guests. We're talking to people, you know, having come being social, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, having conversations. Um, and you no, know, I, I, people are usually interested. Like, oh, you're the artist we're here to see. Tell me more, you know. But, but that said, I spend most of my time asking people what they are up to in their lives. What do you spend your time doing? Are you going on vacation this summer? You got kids? Oh, I see pictures. You know, like it, it's, it's me showing up as a human to be part of this thing. And then, you know, for an hour of the experience, I do happen to be sharing, you know, from this, from the stage, mm-hmm. this thing that I've made. So I do have a, kind of a, some sort of a special role, I guess, in the gathering. But, but we really try to focus our energy on being like, we are, we are one of, of, of everything that's going on here, you know. And how do you find that the the host treat you? In other words, um, yeah, I guess along that same line, is the host see you as just another member of the community at that point? And or do you see them as doing you uh, a favor by having a concert do you, for you? Do you see it? How? What's your overall just get along feeling? I guess with the with the people in general, the host. I, I yeah, guess. I mean, I think that. Um, I think that the, the answer to your question is maybe best answered by the fact that like we have a lot of hosts who hosted us on our very first house concert tour back in 2012 and have done it every summer since then, you know, that like they want to come, they, they want to do this experience again and again and again, because it means something to them. And that's, it goes back to the, 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 a relationship being a two way street, you know, like, if clearly we've, we've, we've achieved our goal of offering them something that, that is valuable to them, that they want to keep, you know, and it, it is, it is an investment for a host to do, to do this. You know, a lot of our hosts, um, prepare food for people or, you know, I love the potluck ones. Actually, those are great when everybody's bringing something, um, you know, but it is, it is an investment to, to make a list of the people you want to invite and send out the invitations and stay on top of, you know, we work really hard to make that process as easy as possible for our hosts. And actually we were very hands and very hands on with, you know, making it like a no brainer situation for our hosts, but it is still an investment. And I'm, and I mean, I wouldn't say that they're doing us a favor Mm -hmm. because that sounds like I owe you, you owe me kind of thing. What we're doing is we're create, we're co-creating something that is meaningful to everyone who shows up. I love and, that that way of looking at it, co-creating so that yeah. you two are coming together to share yeah. the experience with the rest of the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. That's fabulous. That one's actually very, very, very good. <laughs> so when you um uh looking at the house concerts that I've seen or been to and that's uh, are studied it's all usually donation based because you can't mm-hmm. usually charge because it's a bad thing to do in neighborhoods because you're not a business. Right. Um, how have you ever had any problems with um, not getting enough donations? Enough people don't come. Some people just come and they want to hang out and eat the food. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what do you do about that sort of thing? So first of all, every single night we show up somewhere is a risk. Mm-hmm. You know, we have no guarantee. We don't build any, any sort of a guarantee like financial guarantee to our situation. Um, and you know, that was really born out of the very first experience we had that San Diego show we did. It was not my idea. It's my friend, Amy in San Diego, whose idea it was to do it that way. But, but what we learned from that experience and from every experience since then, Uh um, is that really what we are doing, uh, when we show up at someone's house to do a house concert, it's like doing a trust fall. Do you know, do you remember those mm-hmm. icebreaker activities? Yes. yes. <laughs> and everyone hits the floor. We, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? There have been a couple of times that our butt has hit the floor. Yeah. Absolutely. But only a couple of times. And we're, this summer, when we go out on our tour, we will, we will hit our 500th house concert. No. When we go out on our tour this summer. Yeah. Okay. And okay. out of almost 500 shows, I can tell you, about a couple of experiences where I was like, yeah, that hurt. I fell on my butt and that didn't feel so good. What happened? The rest of them. Oh, you know, a lot of them were earlier on, um, in, in our touring experience, our house concert experience. Um, uh, and, and, 
you know, where there wouldn't be very many people, maybe, maybe not very many people showed up or the, the donations were, you know, um, were not what we had hoped for. Um, but really what, what would really happened in those scenarios is that we learned from them and we figured out what we could do to change our planning process so that we could avoid those kinds of situations again in the future. Um, so this is why you should really buy the book if you're listening to this, because mm -hmm. <laughs> you can learn from my mistakes <laughs> and fall on your butt less frequently. Um, yes. So, so, um, but, but, you know, those are the kinds of things every, every time something doesn't go the way we would like it to go, we, we break it apart afterwards. Like, okay, what could we do to make, to set ourselves up for success better next time in a situation mm -hmm. like this? And so we've refined that over time. That said, there are still nights, you know, on our tour last summer, there were, a, there were a couple of different nights where we didn't make, in terms of, like, money made, anywhere close to what we hope for our, like, average nightly income. Mm -hmm. Nothing close to it. But two things. One thing, on the financial tip, we've learned that we're playing the averages here. So, like, we're out on a tour – we can take a big hit on one night because there's going to be another night that's going to totally outperform and it all, it all comes out in the wash. Okay. Um, number two, it's okay to, to take that view of playing the averages and, and, and be fully present and excited for those lower performing nights because for a couple of different reasons. One, there's just sometimes when we show up to a place and the reason that we're there is not to make money. Like, we, we might not have known that in advance, <laughs> which is tricky uh -huh. emotionally, but there's, but like, you know, I can think of a night we had this last summer where we showed up and there were, there were like five people there uh, okay. and we didn't make very much money at all. The host was not the kind of host that could make up the difference by like, Oh my gosh, my people didn't come. Here's an extra big donation for your time. They were not in a position to do that, but we stayed um, at the end of the concert and talked with the host for two hours afterwards because there was some stuff going on in their lives that, we could really be there for them, you know, mm -hmm. in that moment. And it meant a lot to them that we were there. And you know what? It's okay. Like, again, I'm in service to my community. And that night required me to be there for someone in a, in a way that I didn't get a whole lot in return. But the universe is bigger than that one night. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, a few nights later when we showed up at a different house and there was a 60 person crowd and we made 1700 bucks. Yep. Okay. You know, like, so that, that's one reason is that sometimes we're there for, for reasons other than making money. And that is, that is good. I, I would argue keep, that, you know? that, that the story that you just told, I'm almost tearing up because that is so nice that you actually stayed and participated in that person's life because maybe they needed you to hear them. They needed you to be there or somebody to be there. Exactly. Exactly. We are humans trying to help each other along the way. This is a way that I can be of service to people. And I mean, that person that, that host took a risk too, invited us to come. We drove to their house mm -hmm. and showed up and set up all of our gear and like did all this preparation for them. They, they invited us into their lives mm -hmm. in a risky kind of way too. You know, like it, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing when we can actually be human with each other, you know? But the second thing is that we, I've also had a, some of those kinds of experiences in the past, like years and years ago, I remember showing up to a house concert where there were like six people in attendance and we made hardly any money. Mm -hmm. But, you know, at that time I was like, you know, there's probably some reason that we're here. It's okay. In that particular case, uh, the following year, um, somebody who had been a guest at that house concert asked to be a host the following tour. She put on a very successful house concert a guest at her house concert um, asked me to write a personal song for him, which is a thing that I do for people. People can hire me to write a song for a loved one, you know, yeah. um, which is a substantial investment, you know, of, and another guest at her house concert hosted another house concert the following year. So like even the shows that are like, that don't seem successful in a financial way, if you show up, with your full self and give, you know, you can actually make connections with, with the small number of people who are there that will bring that financial reward later on also. And that's not even what it's all about. You know, like that's, it's gravy, <laughs> you know, because you know, the so connection. I can't even think of a, of a downside to doing house concerts uh, 
I really can't. And I mean, I'm trying to think of something. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I can't because I mean everyone goes like <clears throat> you know there's got to be something that's like not good about this like um, I can't think of what that bad thing would be because you're making the money you're making the connections you're making you're doing what you love you've got people sitting mm-hmm. there in a captive space mm-hmm. listening to you what could be better I mean I don't know <laughs> yeah I mean I feel like it really gives me the opportunity to live what I feel like my purpose is mm-hmm. you know. Um, I, I, I've been doing music for a long time. I'm 45 mm-hmm. and I've been doing music in a, you know, trying to be a professional kind of way since I was about 22. And I mean, it's, it's taken years and years and years, but I, I feel like I've, I've arrived at an understanding of why I do what I do and, mm-hmm. and the path that I've been on and the fact that we, ended up doing this weird house concert in San Diego and it took me off of this, you know, left turn and I wasn't expecting really helped me get to an understanding of why I do what I do. And it's, it's a lovely thing to be able to, to feel like, you know, I, I really, I, I, I what I like to say is, is I, I, I clearly I love music, right. Mm-hmm. But I don't do music because I love music. I do music because I love people and doing what I do in this way really allows me to offer myself as a way for people to make a deeper connection with themselves and with each other. And so when we show up and do a house concert for six or 60 people, I believe that I'm there doing my little part to hopefully make the world a little better, you know, like in a little way we need community. We, We need each other. We need those kinds of experiences. We crave them because our world is, so fractured and there are, there are so many reasons for us to be isolated from one another. You know, I, I think that um, gathering in spaces like this and giving people these experiences and sharing these relationships with people um, has been just the most meaningful and surprising thing in my life. And I couldn't have expected that that's where my music career would have taken me, you know, all those years ago, but I'm so grateful that it has. I'm I'm just like, why not? I need to start playing again so I can go out and do some house concerts. Yeah, you should. <laughs> you know? Well, you you've know. got the name for it. What, Michael Jackson's at your house? Wait, what? Wait, Michael, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe we'll take advantage of that one day. Uh, yeah, who knows? You know, if I ever did start playing again, I probably would try and do some house concerts because I do like the one-on-one, um, mm-hmm. just being right there with people, right? You know? And the whole bar scene, like over that since college, over that since whenever, you know, it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't see that as a viable way anymore, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I get it. We'll talk to someone else about, you know, the people struggling to hit Spotify playlist and all that kind of stuff. So, (laughs) well, you know, again, it's all about where you choose to put your energy. Correct. It's correct. So tell me, how can we, um, I want people to get your book. Okay. So um, what's the best way they can do that? Well, there's a couple ways. Um, if you're an ebook type person, you can get it on Amazon um, for your Kindle or Apple books. Give them the name of the book. There's a, a Nook. Oh, yeah, the name of the book. <laughs> That's a good idea. It's called, it has a long title, so stay with me. Ready? It's called No Booker, No Bouncer, No Bartender, How I Made $25,000 on a Two-Month House Concert Tour and How You Can Too. There we go. <laughs> it's a mouthful. And I'm sure you'll remember all of that. But if you remember no booker, no bouncer, no bartender, you'll, you'll yeah. find it. You can also get it on my website. Um, if you are, a, you can, you can get a hard, uh, a, a paperback version on Amazon if you want, but you can also get it directly from my website, which is shannoncurtis.net. And um, you can purchase it there in the store. One of these days for all of us super lazy people, you're going to have to do a, an audio version of it and read it to us. <laughs> you know what? Um, it's on the docket. Actually, that is something that, that we have in the works. It's one of those, you know, multiple plates spinning in our universe that we need to actually finish. <laughs> but yes. I, would, I, would, I yeah. would love to get that. I've already got the original. I need to do the update. Awesome. And so we'll, we're going to make that happen. So Awesome. Thanks a lot. And anything you want to close with and tell people is super awesome, super special. Oh, gosh. Book their uh, next house concerts. Yeah, well, you could do that. But if you're an artist listening and um, if any of the stuff that I've been saying resonates with you, drop me a line. Like I, we, my husband and I both do 
ongoing mentorship of artists all over the world who have adopted uh, our, our house concert method. Um, some of whom haven't adopted the house concert method who would just need a, a fellow soldier to, you know, to wrap their, help wrap their thoughts around, you know, the why and the what of what they're doing as artists. Um, so if, 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 if this resonates with you, you know, feel free to message me on social media or um, uh, um, uh, via email um, uh, via my website. Love to talk with you. Awesome. I'll put all that info in the description down below. All right. (laughs) Thanks, Shannon. Thank you so much, Michael.